North Korea is helping Russia and Ukraine. I'm Kevin Cirilli. It's time for The Daily Debrief. Let's get right to it. Breaking now, White House officials say Russia deployed North Korean weapons against Ukraine. Russia launched North Korea-supplied missiles into Ukraine on December 30th and January 2nd, according to White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby. There has been growing concern that Vladimir Putin has been working with North Korea dictator Kim Jong-un and China's Xi Jinping. On the 30th of December, 2023, Russian forces launched at least one of these North Korean ballistic missiles into Ukraine. This missile appears to have landed in an open field in the Zaporizhia region. Elsewhere in the Middle East, ISIS is claiming responsibility for the deadly bombings in Iran that left more than 100 people killed. The bombings happened during a memorial honoring Qasem Soleimani, the terrorist U.S. forces killed in 2020. The incident is adding concern that the Israel-Hamas war will spread further into the Middle East. Already, the conflict has killed more than 22,000 people, according to Gaza officials, 70 percent of which are children. UNICEF has declared Gaza the worst place in the world to be a child. Breaking news, the school shooter in Perry, Iowa, is dead, and several people, including students, are injured, according to the Associated Press. Uh, this morning at approximately 7.37 a.m., we had a Sears radio activation at the high school, which indicated an active shooter situation. An officer first arrived within seven minutes of that activation uh, and located multiple gunshot victims. The shooter has been identified, but officials declined to share additional details. And House Speaker Mike Johnson, as well as fellow Republicans, had a front row seat to the immigration crisis at the border. In video taken down at the border, immigrants can be seen literally crossing the Rio Grande in real time as Johnson delivered a press conference on the state of the border crisis. Meanwhile, back here in Washington, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre agrees that the system is broken. But coming to a solution may be a lot easier said than done. One thing is absolutely clear. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. And today, we got a firsthand look at the damage and the chaos the border catastrophe is causing in all of our communities. This immigration system has been broken for decades. And we need to have a bipartisan agreement to move forward on how to deal with the system. So Johnson has already made clear that H.R. 2 must be a part of any immigration agreement if the Republican majority in the House wants to get on board with the Democrats. H.R. 2, a.k.a. Secure the Border Act, would expand the border wall, hire more border agents, bar CBP from processing migrants, and curtail asylum eligibility. But keep in mind, we are just two weeks away from a partial government shutdown, which depends on whether H.R. 2 passes. So here to break it down, the battle boiling over the U.S.-Mexico border is the Hill staff writer covering all of this, Rafael Bernal. Welcome, Rafael. Thank you so much for, for sticking with us. There's finger pointing going on on both sides. The Biden administration is blaming Republicans. The GOP is saying that Biden's policies are fueling the migrant crisis. Who is at fault here and why? Well, I, I, I would say Washington is at fault because the one striking similarity that H.R. 2 has the previous fights over how to deal with immigration, how to deal with the southwest border, is in 1996, legislation was passed under threat of a shutdown in the, in the deal, in a budget deal between former President Clinton and former Speaker Newt Gingrich. In 2006, another immigration law was passed, um, the Secure Defense Act, right when the Senate wanted to leave for Christmas. In a hurry, it was just sort of, you know, thrown there. And in this case, you have H.R. 2, which when it was introduced in the in the good old days of the McCarthy speakership, it was really seen as a messaging bill. It was seen as a bill that was just a starting point. Republicans sort of setting setting the stage for a negotiation. But now you see a very real possibility that that. Democrats will have to choose between shutting the border, shutting the government down or, to, or enacting parts or all of H.R. 2. 
Well, Raphael, I, I want to specifically focus in on HR2 because I've been talking to sources who are saying uh, that the Republicans, they are absolutely willing to have a partial government shutdown later this month if HR2 is not included in these negotiations. So how has the focus now specifically zeroed in on HR2? It's exactly what you're saying. There is until December, HR2 or provisions of HR2 were being negotiated in exchange for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan aid. Now it's it's the it's the running of government. It's keeping government open. So a lot of these provisions are things that normally Democrats wouldn't even put on the table. Like they wouldn't negotiate. That that's why HR2 was originally seen as a messaging bill. But now these provisions and, and the White House really opened up the idea that, that they could be discussed in those previous negotiations in December. And and the and Republicans feel emboldened. They feel like they can win this one, they can get HR two. But the question is really if it gets if if it gets enacted, there is very little precedent to think that it will end the border crisis on the short term. So it's a lose lose for Biden. A lose lose for Biden. And then you have the, the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, a Republican who has also emerged as a key uh, uh, policymaker in this national debate outside of Washington and DOJ officials filing a lawsuit against him. Now, that lawsuit is, is very likely to be successful just because not because of uh, how the justices and the Supreme Court feel about immigration or not, but because there is that very clear separation that has withstood challenges in the past where the federal government is in charge of immigration law. If that is overturned, if, 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 you know, if Abbott's law prevails, all of the challenges and ultimately up to the Supreme Court where it's likely to land, then we, we will see a complete change in how immigration policy is, is enforced in this country. And, and that would be, I mean, that would be a watershed moment uh, not dissimilar to ending Roe v. Wade. One word answer, yes or no, before I let you go, will HR2 be included in the negotiations at the end of the day uh, coming up to January 19th, not the 17th, January 19th, ahead of that partial government shutdown date? Yes, in the negotiations. There you go. All right, Rafael Bernal, The Hill's immigration reporter, thank you so much for your excellent reporting and giving us your time. Thanks for having me. It's time now for the Decision Desk 2024 update, and we've got a lot of new developments from the Hill's Decision Desk. New crosstabs from the averages of polls suggest that Nikki Haley's lead in a general election matchup against President Biden has dipped from seven points a month ago to just two points currently. That puts Haley's lead over Biden just on par with former President Donald Trump's lead against Biden, and both are now within the national polling margin of error. Trump is leading Biden by about one percentage point in the national polling averages. But it gets to the bottom line about how Haley's ascent in Iowa and New Hampshire, where she is now beating Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, has hurt her national lead against Biden. Meanwhile, the House Democrats on the Oversight Committee, led by Congressman James Jamie Raskin of Maryland, they say that Trump's businesses received $7.8 million from 20 foreign governments, including China, during his presidency. President Biden, meanwhile, is set to head out on the campaign trail. He's going to be in Valley Forge in Pennsylvania, and his campaign is out with their first ad of 2024, where he's previewing about how he's going to run for re-election and defend democracy. His words. I've made the preservation of American democracy the central issue of my presidency. I believe in free and fair elections and the right to vote fairly. And have your vote counted. So the ad is offering a preview of his strategy. Did you catch the Maricopa County ballot box sign in that final frame? This is a key swing county in Arizona, and it's a battleground state that went for Biden in 2020 that clearly Democrats are hoping they will be able to win back in 2024. Epstein's damning docs unsealed. Bill Clinton, Michael Jackson, billionaire, 
Glenn Dubin and Donald Trump landing on the list. Clinton was referenced over 50 times and even accused of telling Epstein himself that he likes them young, according to one of the pedophile's victims. The documents don't reveal any new allegations of wrongdoing, and Clinton's spokesperson said that the former president knows nothing about the terrible crimes Jeffrey Epstein pleaded guilty to. But that's not the only drama looming over the list. There's been a war of words that broke out between Aaron Rodgers and Jimmy Kimmel after the quarterback went on the popular Pat McAfee show saying that there's a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, really hoping that the list would never come out. A lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping that doesn't ah, come out. Please. <laughs> All right. So that did not sit well with the late night host at all, and he quickly threatened to sue Rogers, saying that his reckless words put my family in danger and keep it up and we will debate the facts further in court. So Pat McAfee also distancing himself from Rogers, and he actually issued an apology for his role in the feud itself. Lululemon founder Chip Wilson is slamming the, quote, whole diversity and inclusion thing in an interview with Forbes, attacking the company as going too far on diversity and inclusion policies. The former Lululemon CEO told Forbes that Lululemon is trying to become like the Gap. He told Forbes, I think the definition of a brand is that you're not everything to everybody. You've got to be clear that you don't want certain customers coming in. The company quickly distanced itself from the billionaire's latest comments, saying his comments do not reflect the company's views or beliefs. The princess of pop, Britney Spears, says that she is not making a comeback to music, but Elvis Presley, the king, he is. The king of rock and roll will take center stage in a new show in London as an AI hologram. The performance Elvis Evolution will run starting in November and will feature a jaw-dropping concert finale. AI's holograms have become more popular in recent years. Other notable mus musicians who have been transformed via artificial intelligence, including ABBA, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Amy Winehouse, Tupac, Roy Oberson, and some others. But who would you want to see in AI? Is it worth it? Let me know down in the comments section below. I got to say, I love Elvis. So if, if I had a chance to go see Elvis via AI or an Elvis hologram, I would do it. Great, great musical artist. That's it for today's Daily Debrief. My name is Kevin Cirilli. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hill's YouTube channel. And come back here soon for the intersection between politics and policy.